With me is Christy Jackson, an immigration lawyer from Laura Devine Solicitors, who provides specialist advice on all aspects of immigration to the US and the UK. And joining me from Washington is Sanam Andalini. Sanam is a British Iranian who has lived and worked in the US since 2001 and works with people from the uh, Middle East, particularly looking at conflict resolution. Sanam, good to have you with us. Firstly, just give us your reaction to what's happened over the weekend, how you and your family are feeling about this executive order. Uh, for us, it's been, thank you, for, thank you very much for having me on. Um, it has been the most unbelievable roller coaster ride of a weekend because basically from Friday night to yesterday evening, um, suddenly most of us who are here as dual citizens, uh, British, British, Iranian and others, um, had the feeling that we weren't able to leave the country and be guaranteed re-entry. So it was this question of a choice of staying here and for me personally staying here and being with my kids or uh, wanting to travel for work and for family reasons to visit my mother in London and, and you know, risking not being able to return here back to my family. So it, it's been an unbelievable weekend of uh, just uncertainty and incredible fear and deep insecurity about really how much protection do we have and how much protection do, does the UK government give us um, if, if these things are going to continue. Christy, what we're hearing there and keep hearing is that there is a huge amount of confusion. What issues particularly would you now like to see clarified? Well, I think we, we um, have the confusion on whether or not permanent residents um, can be admitted um, regardless of their country of nationality. It does seem that there's been some um, uh, some weighing in from the Trump administration that, that permanent residents shall be admitted. Um, I don't think that's being applied consistently across um, every uh, port of entry. Similarly, we have the dual national problem. Um, the executive order um, uh, designates that the, the seven countries, that the, the people who affected are from those countries. And the problem is, is we don't know what from means. Does that mean that they were born in those countries? Does that mean that they hold um, a, a, a passport now? Or does it mean that they once held a passport? Um, they didn't clarify um, what that means. Um, so, so we don't know. It is left up to the interpretation of the uh, Customs and Border Protection officers at the ports of entry. And, and as we're seeing, it's, it's caused chaos. They weren't prepared. They didn't know about uh, this, this ban being um, implemented on Friday. Uh, of course, it was preceding a weekend. So we were left really with a, a weekend of, of mass chaos across the country um, with immigration uh, advocates um, trying to help uh, clients and, and non-clients to, to figure out what was happening. And in some places, they're being admitted. And in others, they're not. Sanam, how does it make you and your, your friends and family feel about your position in America as well and whether or not you feel welcome? That, that's exactly the, the question. I mean, I, you know, I'm a British citizen. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be a British citizen. I've always felt that that's, you know, that's, that's a passport that protects me wherever I am. And that's really how many of us have felt. And then all of a sudden, um, the stories that we've, he we've heard, not only about this question of if you leave and the immigration officer that comes back, it really you're at their discretion or, or in, their, in their hands. But other stories of people's social media and Facebook being checked and their political be views being asked at the border. Um, this, this, is, this is deeply un-American, first of all. Um, but, but it's also extremely alarming because you have, but at that point, you, you really are the most vulnerable um, and, and, and you wonder who is there and, and you know, w literally overnight in the, in, in the last 48 hours, our sense of security and, and, um, and uh, safety has, has really been rocked, I think. Christy, there is this talk about extreme vetting. Yeah. Isn't it pretty extreme already, what it people is. go through? The, uh, the refugee program, um, typically uh, the background checks will last 18 to 24 months. Um, it's a significant um, level of, 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 of vetting and um, it involves many agencies. They're doing that for visa applicants, both non-immigrant visas, you know, visitors, and immigrants. So, so what Sanam's describing, people checking their Facebook pages, their social media, their contacts, that's it, already happening. It does happen. Yeah, it does happen now. It happens in the visa context. Um, an applicant for a visa um, who goes to the embassy often will be Googled. Um, that's well known that that, that happens. Um, and, and, and their social media checked. But the same on entry. Um, it's, 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 this isn't something new. So I don't, we don't know exactly what extreme vetting is when what we're doing right now is already um, quite significant.
Salam, you work with a lot of women, a lot of activists all over the world from the Middle East too. Are you concerned that their work will literally be stopped because they won't be able to travel to the US perhaps to, for their voices to be heard at various forums? I'm, I'm extremely concerned about that because uh, they, the women I work with, Yemeni, Syrians, Iraqis, basically from all of the countries that, that have been banned, um, are the ones who are at the front lines of dealing with extremism, with Daesh and, and with other radical groups. And the idea that we're not going to be able to have them not only in Washington or in the U.S. to speak about these issues, but at the U.N. This, this is something that is front and center for the U.N. to deal with and for us as an international community. And again, as, as the British government, as a member of the Security Council, as a government that has been at the forefront of uh, pushing certain policies and uh, championing certain policies around women, peace and security and so forth, to, to suddenly say, you know, are we going to be able to have these colleagues at the UN in March coming up at the, at the annual Commission on the Status of Women meetings? Um, and if we can't, if, if UN member states' uh, uh, citizens cannot come to the UN to speak for themselves, then, you know, should the UN be holding these meetings elsewhere? Should the UN be, me um, be moving? Th these are significant questions because I don't think that the ban is going to be limited, to, first of all, to these countries. And secondly, the uncertainty just, just creates even more chaos for everybody. Christy, I've just been looking at the advice from the Foreign Office that says it's your responsibility to know and understand the entry rules before you travel to the US. This presents a problem because of the confusion. But what advice would you give people? Yeah, so I think that, that it, it is um, doing your homework, knowing that it's changing, um, literally by the minute, um, and it, that it's not being consistently applied across uh, the border, uh, across all borders. I do think that we're going to see a little bit more clarity as this week goes on, because I think this all happened over the weekend. So hopefully we'll see a little bit of clarity as the week goes on and, and at least some consistency. But I think we also need to be aware that things could still change. New countries could be added, and they have indicated, because the countries that are currently listed aren't even um, ones that have had any terrorism-related activities in the U.S. in 40 years, we may start seeing other countries added. So it really is a watch this space situation right now. Christy, great to have your thoughts. And Sanam, thank, thank you. you very much for joining us early in the morning from Washington. As Christy was saying, not all of those countries are there. We're going to be taking you to our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, who's in Saudi Arabia right now, not on the list, uh, to get uh, some thoughts from her a little bit later in the program too.